I think we, we do have some pretty solid music selection on the Avionics team. Yeah. Like, I think that as far as teams go, like, if DeAndre is DJing at the test site, then it's act- we're actually having a good time. Yes. But if, if it's anyone else on music, then it's like, what is this, like, discotheque elevator music that we have on right now? I just, like... <laughs> that hasn't happened to us too many times recently. I feel uh, like it, it's, it's yeah. been pretty, I don't know. Pretty decent selection lately. It's I pretty, was we got some classic rock though when I went in and there was no music and I was like, "This is almost more disrespectful." <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have like, shitty right. music <laughs> and yeah. someone trying. It's it. like have Please something, yeah. right? Try, <laughs> try, <laughs> fucking. I want to hear what people listen to, oh, and dude. it's just like, it says a lot. And I'm like, "Oh, this is what you listen to." That's how you get to know them, and it's just like, ah, oh, says a lot. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's dive into it. So let's we'll start off with some intros here. We'll go around the room. Uh, DeAndre, if you want to kick it off, uh, just go over. You know you know, where you came from, how you got to Hermius. Um, but I also think that avionics is pretty unique here at Hermius in terms of like what we're trying to do from a software perspective, from an electrical perspective. Um, so I'm also curious in terms of expectation versus reality, how that played out here at Hermius as well. Okay. So DeAndre, you, you want to kick us off? All right. Yeah. So these guys know me, but I'm DeAndre Capati, uh, flight software here at Hermius. Uh, I came from a specialized R&D shop in Tucson, Arizona. Um, We focused on hybrid quadcopters. So we had this flavor of vertical takeoff and landing uh, that would transition to fixed wing flight, which was really cool. Um, That got eyes amongst like a lot of people uh, in the industry. And then we got actually acquired by L3. And then during my time, I saw L3 get acquired by or merge with uh, uh, Harris. And, you know, I Rode it out for like a year. Uh, did some really cool things with like firmware, uh, ground station software, command and control. Um, then I found myself here at Hermius after doing. So I actually attribute it to the LinkedIn algorithm because I actually applied to Boom. <laughs> and then, Uno reverse. What's Uno up? Reverse. <laughs> now and, <you> <laughs> and then you know I saw Hermius and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like super. At the time, it was like very early and I was like, ah, like, like this, this is what I wanted, more ownership, uh, grounds up stuff, like the product uh, I came from was pretty well developed and it was going into production, production and I was like, ah, I want something more like, you know, foundational and super cool. So uh, that's how I found myself here. Sweet. Yep. Natalie, you want to go next here? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Natalie Rakowski. Uh, I came from, uh, I was just in the middle of my master's degree um, doing robotics research at Georgia Tech. Um, and I had worked like in uh, kind of the vehicle sphere uh, through internships. And I've always loved making uh, products for people. Um, and, you know, kind you can help like, sens- like simplify people's lives through engineering um, or empowering them. And so, um, you know, uh, to find out about the startup, Hermias, um, wanting to transform, you know, the global transportation infrastructure. Super cool. Um, I decided, like, you know, it would be a great opportunity and decided to join. Um, and so far, it's been, like, a great learning experience, especially because I guess I'm kind of, like, I wouldn't say new grad, but, like, newer out of college. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Matt, you want to give a little intro to yourself, too? Sure. So I'm Matt Bigelow. Um, I kind of got my start, I guess, at uh, San Diego National Labs. That was my first full-time job after school. Um, and uh, we kind of did everything from, um, you know, flight software to navigation, guidance control, uh, to uh, simulation work, um, kind of through almost the full life cycle of a vehicle. Uh, and this was R&D type vehicles, mostly uh, DOD type projects. So um various rockets, hypersonic vehicles, gliders, things like that. Um, there's a lot of different uh, vehicles that I worked on. A lot of them were hypersonic, um, you know, not all of them, but, uh, you know, it was a great experience to, you know, kind of have a lot of hands-on on the hardware uh, as, as well as, you know, programming that hardware um, and uh, learning how to put simulations together, run them both in fast time as well as real time. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of great experience as well as being at the test, which was really cool. Um, you know, it's nothing better than, you know, launching rockets at a Hawaii. I mean, like, that was, that was we're not awesome. doing that yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, no, we're not there yet. But, wait, wait. But, uh, so, Matt, how many hypersonic vehicles have you worked on that you can tell us? Like more than these fingers? <laughs> Probably Less about, than those, these about fingers? those fingers. I, this is a thing about, you know, I was trying to quantify, like, how many different vehicles, you know, was you know? it? And it's like, well, if you count the rockets and things yet. Yeah, oh, when we, were, when we were, like, 
tallying up things for the team and it's just like so we have these metrics on like how many things that you know the team has made and like Maz is like well you know y- you know <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> difficult I mean you know it's like does, is this a separate one or is this the same yeah. one or is you know it's like well we flew two of these but they're kind of the same thing so you know oh man um, yeah there was, that's was, a cool problem to have, it's the man. best problem <laughs> it was it was hard to come up with a number so we, we just settled on numbers so yes round 10 Sweet. Sure. So, Matt, also kind of tell us how you got to Hermes. Sure. So, <laughs> I was on LinkedIn. Um, ah, the one algorithm. Day back in so good. 2019. This was a while mm-hmm. ago. And uh, I saw this thing about an engine that uh, was uh, being run, this test being performed. I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I was like, what does this company do exactly? And so I looked at it. I was like, oh, hypersonic aircraft. Whoa, <laughs> that's a cool concept. And I was like, where are they located? <gasps> Atlanta. Oh, sweet. So, Sandia National Labs is uh, based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm actually from the East Coast area, uh, Virginia and Georgia area. Um, and a lot of my family, friends, things like that are here. So, uh, it was like totally a great opportunity. I was like, this is something I want to do because I always had this dream of working on uh, commercial transport. You know, a lot of the military stuff's really cool and, you know, uh, cutting edge type technology and stuff. But, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do something to, to move people faster. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is just like, it. This is this is the thing, and so uh, I started talking to uh, AJ, actually the CEO, um, back in December, January timeframe. Uh, had another conversation with Skyler, the COO, um, you know, back in February, something like that of 2020, I guess. Uh, and then um, COVID happened, and you know they were they were trying to raise their Series A and uh, things like that. I think that got kind of delayed. And uh, long story short, then probably around November of 2020. Uh, actually, I had, I had an interview back in May of 2020. That's right. Uh, it was a, via Zoom, mm-hmm. um, which I'd never done that before. That was kind of interesting and went okay, I guess. But then uh, came back, came finally in person in November and uh, did an interview. I think at that point it was like, okay, your Series A has been raised. You know, we have a need for GNC slash flight software folks. You know, and so let's uh, get them on board. And finally started in January of 2021. So, you know, it took a, a little over a year, I guess, in the making of uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> getting here, but uh, definitely well worth it. So I think, you know, compared to the rest of us, you know, you coming from, you know, a much bigger company, I'm very curious to see what you expected coming to a very small team, which I know you operated within small teams, but a very small company specifically. I'm curious, right. like, how expectations in reality, like, so, either aligned or didn't align. Yeah, for you. So, so I actually had some uh, co-op or internship experience with mm-hmm. uh, ATA Engineering, which is also a small company, um, a little bigger at the time than we are now. Um, so I kind of got the flavor of that with that, but... Um, there's definitely, you know, after working in a larger company with a lot of, you know, red tape, especially government related type stuff, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, red tape is is not there. There's a lot of freedom. There's a lot of, you know, oh, I can do that. You know, oh, I'm allowed to just jump in and solve that problem without somebody telling me I have to, that kind of, you know, th- that sort of thing. So it was great. I, I, I just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, oh my gosh, I can do all these things, you know. <laughs> no <laughs> so, handcuffs. That's right. It's, no it's, we, have to, we have to almost train people that they don't have handcuffs. Like people kind of come from other places right. and they're like, oh, like I have to follow these rules. And like, no, no, no. Right. No, what you if don't. there were no rules? Like, yeah. <laughs> imagine a world. That's like right. imagine so, you're writing the rules. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that that was a. Um, it's still an eye opener. I think it's like I still kind of have that mentality sometimes. I mean, you, you're in a place for nine plus years. You know, it's, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna kind of stick with that. But uh, no, it's it, it's been amazing to kind of explore all the different things and get involved with stuff that probably would never get involved with normally. Um, you know, if I had a particular role and you know had to kind of fit within that. Mm-hmm. Sweet. So I feel like the go-to audience for this podcast are people very much in the aerospace world, you know, engines, you know, like how how the aero side of things works. So really, I think a good place to start is just like, what is avionics? Like, what the hell is avionics? Oh, <laughs> you put this in the in the fun yeah. talk. Yeah. So, yeah. You want to so, give that you know, textbook I'll, 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 definition? A lot of people don't know that avionics is actually just uh, just smashing two words together, aviation electronics, which I think broke some brains. But yeah, it's just... I think Skyler puts it well. He's just like all things electrons. Um, But everything from the software to the network to the electronics, um, if it, you know, the ones and zeros, the bits and the bops. It's not uh, the bits and the bops. (laughs) We're not using that alliteration. This is going to be an interview question. It's going to be, it's going to be, how do you alliterate, you know? The ones and zeros. The ones and zeros. It's beeps and boops. (laughs) Only answer. Only correct answer. So which one's which? Oh, oh that's, ooh, th- there's, yeah, that's a, I think the beeps are the ones. Beeps. The boops are the zeros. We, we could go down yeah. a rabbit hole here. Right. But, you know, like when it, when it comes down to avionics, like I think that uh, like how I think about it is just like, you know, it really is like a mini company within Hermes. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, where everyone here and even for the rest of the avionics team really owns like a full discipline 
to themselves, right? Whether it might be designing PCBs or the GNC side of things or the visualization side of things or the data side of things, or even like the whole flight software stack. Um, I'm kind of curious to just kind of go around again, uh, talk about like, what you guys are doing. And of course, I forgot my own intro as well, but <laughs> I'm Anthony Avionics lead here. So uh, a big part of what I do here is kind of think about like how all these little jigsaw puzzle pieces come together. Um, you know, right now focusing on like, of course, uh, the engine, block one engine that we're working on as a team, but you know, beyond that as well, you know, like integrating that into a quarter horse and beyond that dark horse and beyond that now officially Halcyon, it's the most exciting set of problems thinking about how something that's like could be conceived as pretty boring, just like a bunch of software, a bunch of, you know, transistors on a board. It's just like, how do you think about the most aggressive version of a future in this space and then build a team to go out and do that? Um, so yeah, definitely want to go around the room and say like, talk a little bit about your specific area of expertise and then also kind of the five-year version of that department. So I guess Biglow, if you want to kick us off here, what does that, how does that play out for you? Right. I, it's funny to answer these questions because in my experience, you know, your thoughts of things right now and then a year later, and then three years later, and then five years later, totally different, right? Oh, yeah. yeah like, exactly. This is what's going to be. And then it's like, nope, that's not at all. Oh, so, yeah? So, sure, I'll... I'll <laughs> you ha you're always re I'll, I'll answer a question here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so uh, kind of the purpose, uh, guidance navigation control mm -hmm. is uh, GNC, um, for those that don't know. Um, and kind of the meat of the thing that we do is uh, the algorithms that go into the flight software that, um, you know, control the vehicle, that uh, guide it to where it needs to go, as well as navigate and understand where the vehicle is. Um, and, uh, you know, my experience kind of GNC was a broader role, like it included the flight software, it included uh, also the simulation itself that uh, is a tool that is used to kind of verify that software, verify those algorithms, things like that. Um, so kind of the, the purpose and plan or whatever of this, this group is uh, to create those algorithms, verify those algorithms via the tools that we have available, uh, provide uh, any kind of support and input to other groups that may need information as far as performance and, uh, you know, other data aspects, as well as, uh, you know, create that software package, that binary that goes on the actual vehicle, flies that vehicle, uh, sends data back or, or collects data and, you know, we, we harvest that data then. Um, and then analyze that data, obviously, you know, make improvements, iterate, make, you know, make, do that kind of cycle. So, uh, you know, in, in five years, uh, you know, it's going to be a bigger team because there's a lot of aspects that have to be done. And we're going to have multiple vehicles that we're going to be working on. So, you know, we need at least, you know, so few to several people working on probably each vehicle or something. If that's how we decide to divide it up, uh, this is one of those unknown <laughs> things. Who knows? You know, maybe it makes more sense to have, you know, a bigger group that everybody works on everything. Or maybe it makes sense to have people that have individual vehicles that mm -hmm. they're working on. It depends on how uh, cohesive, I guess, the algorithm, software, simulation, things like that uh, are over the years. Um, so I know you've spent a lot of time thinking about this, but it's just like a, a very cool thing about you know, being the zero to one of GNC at a company is also you get to kind of build out how that plays out long term as well, right? It's just like, right. hey, like, are you, do you have an agnostic GNC kind of powerhouse that feeds a quarter horse version of a GNC and, you know, all these things? Or, do you know, do you actually have like these little nucleuses uh, that right. funnel up to a big thing? Like, it's actually pretty cool to kind of be there saying like, hey, we're going to try it out and see what works. Right, exactly. And I think that's one of also the nice things about this is we can try stuff out. And then when it, if it doesn't work, we can change to something else. You know, it's it's not like, oh, well, you started down that path. You have to finish it or something that oh, way. Yeah. Like, no, we can we iterate and fix it. Right. I think that's the greatest tale about Hermius. It's just like, oh, we revector. And it's like, if it fucking sucks, that's fine. Switch it. Switch it. <laughs> yeah. Right. If it sucks, do something new. We, we do something new. It's that's so right. easy. It's mm -hmm. like. Yep. I think the best thing about here is just like that's the quick, the quick way we can just turn, mm -hmm. and we all are on the same page of like, hey, yes, this isn't the way. Skirt. Let's mm -hmm. move to the oh, next yeah. one. Oh yeah, absolutely. So another question that we get often is just like, what is a hittle? That's a word we say a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds like a phonetic. So it goes what, what is a hittle? <laughs> by many names. <laughs> it is a, so hittle stands for hardware in the loop simulation uh, or hardware in the loop, really. But uh, I've heard it by hill or. H will or I don't know probably other things I'm forgetting but uh, th there's several different names for it but it's the same thing uh, the idea is is that you're taking uh, some parts of hardware some actual pieces of hardware whether it's electronics whether it's maybe actuators maybe it's um, you know I don't know what, what whatever kind of hardware that might be present on the aircraft and uh, wrapping typically some kind of simulation or 
uh, you're actually using your software that you're going to fly on the aircraft with that hardware. So mm -hmm. you're using hardware in the either simulation or control loop, mm -hmm. essentially, uh, with that software or simulation to uh, verify or even just run a test or something like that so that you can make sure that whatever these algorithms are that are in software are actually performing as expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a massive part of it is just like making sure our code works before we fly it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because even though we want to rapidly iterate, we don't want to crash a whole bunch of vehicles. Mm -hmm. If there's stuff we can, oh, solve. Got to solve right. the solvable problems. If there's if there's things we can suss out and mm -hmm. fix before we actually fly, oh, yeah. that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the Googleable problems, or I guess in our case, like the Stack Overflowable problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stack Overflow was down the other day. And oh. <laughs> like, I'm convinced that just across the nation, productivity dipped a little bit. Maybe they had a stack overflow. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. <laughs> or a <laughs> server fault or something. Yeah. Sweet. DeAndre, you want to talk a little bit on the, the flight software side of things, specifically, you know, what that looks like today here at Hermius, but then also, you know, as we grow this out five years, like what's, what's the long-term play out for, you know, how to build software in an aviation company? Yeah, well, there's, uh, at least here at Hermius right now, what we're doing for flight software, it's really working a lot with you with like you know the flight computers specifically there's uh larger details there of where the flight computers then there's like the ground station software and at least for the stack we're building for quarter horse um there's a few things we can like segregate into their own categories um but right now it's the flight software on the computer working with matt bigelow really feeding him uh he's feeding me like the control algorithms that you know we do it in the simulation then it's just like, hey, this is this is the checkbox of like this works here. Let's move it down to where it needs to be in the flight computers. Um, so I guess like that that feedback loop is like super tight right now, and we gotta keep it super tight to like you know be fast and actually like get to our product. Um, and how that grows actually, it like coming here, it kind of broke my brain on like how are we gonna how are we gonna grow the team for the avionics? Like are we gonna do separate GNC? Are we gonna do, you know, software? Are we like is there a DevOps team? Like honestly, like this is where it kind of breaks my mind on like I don't know what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna we're gonna try to do something and we're gonna find the pain points and we're just gonna be like, oh this kind of sucks. We are gonna shift to this type of paradigm and I, like I think like I said, we're really good at that. Mm -hmm. um, and where I see it right now, I think it's like as really the uh, GNC flight software, it's super tight loop. And then uh, I think we, how we've been splitting it up right now with like a field team and then like a dev team has been working very yeah. great for this uh, paradigm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how well that scales, you know, eventually say we get like 30, 40 people. I don't know. Maybe, maybe oh, it gonna, still works. We're going to figure it out. And like, you know, Matt was saying like, the, the game is refactoring as well. Oh, yeah. And then, mm -hmm. like, maybe some people are flight testing mm -hmm. in different countries. Mm -hmm. Australia, I'm signing up, and I'm like, sorry, guys. <laughs> you can hey. play the Scorpions, man. Uh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't yeah, want it's, to do with that. It's fine. <laughs> but I'm, like, uh, I guess, like, I don't have a clear vision, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's the hard thing. It's, like, I want to, mm -hmm. I'm trying to build it, oh, but yeah. based on, like, where I came from, mm -hmm. it's just, like, I haven't seen it done like it's done here. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that's the cool part, and also like oh, yeah. kind of like the the hard part. It's oh, like a it's people terrifying, but it's, it's it, exciting set of problems. Man. But the thing <laughs> yes. is, it's like a people problem more than like an actual technical problem. Yeah. Is how you get information flow like mm -hmm. super tight knit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the high level details is like keeping keeping the communication flow mm -hmm. really really tight mm -hmm. is like I think how we succeed. And as long as that happens, hey, mm -hmm. it kind of doesn't matter how like we shape the different teams like mm -hmm. that overall end goal is what we need yeah. so deandre i know you have a lot of feelings here and natalie i know you also have opinions here um but a question i get a lot is uh you know like how do you think about newer technologies all the buzzwords you know you know artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain synergy <laughs> 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 but it's just like you know uh you usually don't see you know aviation companies specifically their avionics team within these aviation companies really embracing the new tech that's out there i'm going to steal this from dennis but you know he always says that you know you have these big companies these massive conglomerates and they're making products that are coming out 10 years from now using mm -hmm. the tech from 10 years ago yep. right mm -hmm. so i'm curious what you guys think about like how do you think about using new tech in the spaces that we're trying to play in oh it's like so like even seeing at my last place like you aerospace just is known for like using old tech. I think maybe because it's like when it works, 
it's fine. Like let's mm-hmm. let's just if it ain't like, broke. It don't fit. <laughs> like don't, yep. touch okay, it. don't fix it. <laughs> don't fix off. it. Uh, <laughs> and like the thing is, it's just like I think coming here to where like there is things are still foundational. Hey, let's bring in those like great great new tech so we can uh, go ahead and integrate that. Uh, be more modern. Um, I think like traditional like software companies are really great at bringing in like new new aspiring technologies like whether it's a front end language. Uh, interpreted language i think what we're doing here is just like uh at least for like the simulation stuff like bringing in julia that's like kind of a hot take on like being being oh, a new language we're gonna get in some more hot take mm-hmm. hot yeah. takes later but it's just like even <laughs> yeah. things where it's just like on the visualization side like natalie the stuff you're doing is just like do we go iads which literally has a button for like have a little pen cursor that like makes your line graphs or do you actually do something modern like yeah no i think the answer is we do something modern oh, yeah. i think there is so much to go uh we we can go into about um user experience mm-hmm. with aircraft yeah also uh just you know smart um situate sorry situational awareness technology mm-hmm. with sensors and alerts um just being able to understand more about the complex system mm-hmm. that is an aircraft. Yeah, I know that like something you've really driven also is just like how do you think about like the newer type of tool chains side of things as well? Like whether it's you know the AWS suite that we're bringing in or like even like the GitLab side of things, right? It's just like how do you actually think about like software development today, not just like software development from a decade ago, um, which I think mm-hmm. has also been really a cool thing that we've been doing on the on the software side here at Hermius. Sweet. Uh, Natalie, and then also for you on like the visualization side of things, you know, talking about uh, what that looks like today, but then also how that grows later on. Like, I'm curious what your thoughts up there are. Yeah. So today, um, you know, my job right now is a lot of building infrastructure, mm-hmm. almost kind of like a DevOps role because I'm developing tools that for the company to use. Um, and that's going to scale up uh, as we grow and we work on multiple vehicles. We're going to be able, we should be able to, um, you know, run multiple engines at one time of, you know, different um, types. Um, and all of that's going to feed in to like a whole pipeline of not only visualization, but also analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, one day I want us to be able to take an engine run and tell you know exactly what changed what was off nominal from Mm -hmm. average what what we made these changes you know how did it Mm -hmm. um affect our performance what were uh the positives and negatives but also during an engine run to be able to understand you know what is too far off nominal oh yeah right it's just like how do you not just get data but like actually get useful like information and like actual like usable things from yeah. that data as well. There's right? a whole um, field of data visualization, mm-hmm. but the number one thing is like, we can see all the lines on a graph. Mm-hmm. You, you know, a person can't understand what the 50 different lines across oh. the board mean, but um, if we can craft something that will help us understand like what's truly mm-hmm. uh, going on, um, it is uh, so much more valuable. There's like this picture of, I think it's like the space shuttle or like the Apollo era, like cockpit versus what was on Crew Dragon. And it's just this single touch screen, right? Just super minimal. Like it's like Apple, like brought to you by Apple, right? Uh Um, And I think that that is the direction because there is an inflection point that I think a lot of engineers miss where it's just like there is an inflection point where more data is actually less data, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's just like if you were seeing too many line graphs, then you might as well just like see nothing, right? And mm-hmm. it's like really finding out what people care about, and even like the HMI side of things, like the user experience side of things, which you touched on earlier. It's like that really matters too. It's uh, super exciting that we're gonna go into developing our own command control GUI soon, mm-hmm. and uh, we're gonna be hiring like front end developers that are gonna work right beside pilots. Oh yeah, and try to like redefine, mm-hmm. you know, what is aircraft controls. Oh, that's the right way to do and it. Not yes. EA ads. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We don't have to get into yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's I'll not the way. Throw, I'll throw them <laughs> under the bus. I mean, but speaking of that, so I think that like a big thing on the avionics team is all the hot takes we have, right? So I, I wanted to just like, I had I had a couple things that I wanted to go down and I think we're probably all going to agree, but I'm curious where we disagree. Oh, okay. Right? So we're just going to go at it, right? So Windows, Mac, Linux, Natalie, you want to kick us off? What's the lay? Oh my goodness. Linux. Oh, I think this one's an easy one. 
Matt, what about you? Oh no, I'm gonna say Windows. I'm really? I'm, I'm <laughs> always, yeah, I I grew up with Windows. Are you three eleven? Well, okay, okay. I for, for, for like for all pur- <laughs> for all purposes, or just like I I'd say Windows all, if you're like okay, gaming. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, like wait. If you're so, a big so, gamer, so, so yes, yeah, so Windows. so for gaming for uh, graphical user stuff. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still a big Windows proponent, but really? uh, if you're trying to do, I don't look at you different. It's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just I don't like the X Windows system. I'm sorry, it's too sluggish to me. Mm. Mm. I don't like it. Right. Interesting. Right. I I just, DeAndre, I, what about you? Yeah. Right, I, I bet you're a Linux boy. I'm a Linux boy. Oh. It, exactly. See, I I think I would be so about Linux if it weren't for just like the Microsoft Office suite not being available. Like I don't want to use like LibreOffice. Like, oh yeah, it's that's like actually, that's gross. Yeah. It's yeah. gross. Oh mm-hmm. man, that is also like if the Microsoft suite. Like that's my one thing. If a if there was an, a current tool that's not cross platform compatible, that was easily Microsoft Office. Like if that was on Linux, that'd be my thing. So I'm a big proponent of Win- Linux backend stuff. I also mm-hmm. love the fact that. Microsoft has integrated kind of essentially the Linux kernel into Windows. So you have a you know Windows uh, subsystem for yeah, Linux. WSL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh! Like now you got the best of both worlds. Yeah. Like you can do both. Like it's. Uh, it, I, and I, interestingly I, enough, <laughs> I found that the performance of that Linux kernel is better than the Windows kernel. It's so interesting. That oh, yeah, they, yeah, it. yeah, it, it's on the same system. Yep. Uh, I will say for like Mac, it's kind of great what they've done with a. Uh, at least integrating like their terminal at the like yeah. kind of the forefront. Oh, because it's all, it's all like, built off of Unix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. it's great. And it's like if you want the intermediate, I think like you Mac is like a shiny new mm-hmm. bike, mm. and then Linux is like <laughs> great bike parts, mm-hmm. and then yeah, Linux is build your then, own bike, and then Windows is like oh, this is a, this is a good bike. This is a good. Bike. <laughs> It's kind of a good bike. That's Here's the best. Yeah, it's like a Windows Cannondale. Is a <laughs> like when you yeah. want a good, you know, mountain bike, yeah. you just buy a Cannondale. I think right. one of my buddies gave me that uh, that uh, analogy of mm. it, and I'm like, that's fucking accurate. That's <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Accurate. It's on the money. That's so. They're just <laughs> operating systems are bikes. Oh, yeah. they're there just that's what that's my takeaway. Oh man, I'm <laughs> still I'm still shocked that you're a Windows boy. Really? I, it's <laughs> just it's kind of what I've always mm. used. I mean, what are we using here? Mm. I will say I mean, though, there's like never been a better time to develop avionics. Companies like, use like, Windows too. Yeah. Like I, honestly, like big yeah. companies, like you go there, what are they? They're Windows houses. Oh, like, yeah. I will say, is. like something Windows does have going for it though is just like the WSL, like VS Code, like yeah. the Docker yeah. team, like that yeah. environment. Yeah, like, I think I will made give some that, good give decisions that. there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's great. You know what's yeah. crazy is like Windows. I feel like is the least intimidating of like when you get into a computer, you know where everything is. Mm. That's because you've used it before. And yeah. Yes. And then you have to like uninstall Edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, there. Edge is pretty good now. It's kind of like Chrome. Yeah. They yeah. they they've rebranded it, so it looks exactly the same. I want to so see those RAM numbers. Yeah. Show me the RAM numbers. No, that's I the thing. Know. I think yeah. it is slightly more RAM efficient really? than Chrome. Yeah. yeah. Chrome I've seen a... I've seen people here use it by uh-huh. accident because they don't even know because it looks <gasps> the same. Ooh. I was also like a hater for a while, uh-huh. and then I like just tried out recently. Mm. And yeah, it's is it's, Edge coming out? Yeah, Edge is kind of Edge is coming up. Yeah. It's still not there on the phone yet. I feel like it's mm. it's yeah. still I crashes too much for me. I left Windows when I was like in college uh-huh. and went to like Linux slash Mac. I also I really like Macs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that they don't have all of the open source things uh, right. the same yeah. as Linux. Um, but then when WSL came out, yeah, I was like, okay, I can I think I can buy a Windows mm-hmm. machine oh, again. Yeah. Windows 10, that was the game changer with WSL. Oh, yeah. Oh. Windows 11 yeah. is out now. WSL 2. WSL 2. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, gotta get, you gotta get the second number one. Yeah, the number one was, uh, yeah. You could not compile yeah. a lot of C++ yeah. in it. It would yeah, have it was, issues. It was missing a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, we can also get into the whole like open source debacle, oh, yeah. the philosophical debacle it's on like open sourceness. Philosophical <laughs> so debacle. Do you guys, I'm curious on your guys' aspect, do you like. Are you here for w- open source projects? You know, like you a proponent of like, hey, yeah, open source projects kick ass and we should support them. Or should we like, no, just like buy the product? I don't know. Ooh. Oh. Uh, free software. So free software. I <laughs> love open source projects in that you can get the perspective of so many people and they can ask for, you know, new features mm-hmm. or build them themselves and they get included. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like having the... Um, not only like the opinion, the viewpoint, but also the hands in making a product. There's a whole community, the, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Like, but before uh, around each thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, but then, like when you're, but when you are going into production and you're building something, you know, like a plane, um, we cannot, you know, have, you know, people like 
always adding in different things, right? It has oh, you got to freeze it. And like yeah. not adding not even, it right mm-hmm. too, because I feel like where open source fails, it's like uh, sometimes they add something not the grit, like yes. not in the mm-hmm. right well, form factor. It's funny because I feel like the continuous integration processes with most open source projects are probably superior to a lot of not open source. I'm getting a lot of fire for this, but like probably <laughs> superior <laughs> to like most closed source stuff. Because for what I'm, yes. you don't know what the processes are, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I feel like there's a lot more scrutiny and user scrutiny on the open source stuff. Now, yes, there's a lot less like maybe managerial oversight that says don't do this but do this and that's important and it makes things work sometimes. But uh, I don't know. I, I would say that, yes, maybe people add things that aren't great, but I feel like there's also a higher chance that maybe that stuff gets caught before it actually yeah. gets pushed out to the, you know, whatever branch you're using. I, I will real. say anyone who is like actively like supporting an open source project, like they're doing this on their free time uh, yeah. for the most part. And it's like they're going to give their best work. That's the Lord's work. And right there. it's just oh like that's God. that's the heart <laughs> of that I love about open source is just like these people just believe and want to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's that's kick ass. But there's like the other take of just like devil's advocate. It's just like, ah, they can maybe not make it that, that great. But so, I assume if you're using your own time, you're going to try your hardest. So one thing I love about open source is being able to actually look at the source. Now, that's maybe seemed obvious, but, you know, it's the and fact that you look like, at the license, something, <laughs> <laughs> something, something doesn't work right or doesn't work or you don't know how it works. Right. And you go in and you look at it and like, oh. That's what that does under the hood. Ooh, I know how to do something better with that. So you can go do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Or I can fix it if there's a problem or something like that. And, uh, you know, you just can't do that with closed source mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, at the same time, you know, closed source stuff, um, there's a lot potentially more pedigree to it because, like I said, you've got these company oversights and things like that. And you have people that are paying money to make features and, and bug fixes and stuff like that that don't always exist on the open source side. So, so you, do you think the scrutiny on an open source project is more than a closed source project? I think it depends on the project. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's that's really fair. project that's dependent. Fair. But that's yeah. a cop-out. Mm. That's also <laughs> such a big low an- Big low's answer for everything is it depends. But it, it's but a, that's it's a, a true yes, engineer no. response. Right? I can't make a... Yeah, it's, it's the a, most neutral is yeah. just like, well... I think that's fine, though. It's and then, fine. like, fast yeah. forward an hour and a half and we're just, like, full just drawing yeah. charts. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, it, I promise it depends. And then I'm like, you're right, it depends. <laughs> oh, all right. Next hot take question here. Python versus MATLAB versus Julia. Oh. How are you, you feeling? Oh, you threw Julia in there. I'm totally that Julia. Curveball. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. What about if it was just Python and MATLAB? Yeah, that's a harder question. Ooh. Um, what if it r- ranked the three? I would say uh, rank the three. So Julia easily up top. Yeah. MATLAB's yeah. not a real language. I'll say that. <laughs> it's a scripting <laughs> language. It's a scripting language. It counts. It's like JavaScript or something, right? It doesn't count in my book. Ooh. Ooh, I, I hear the only thing special about that. MATLAB is all the toolboxes you can purchase. But, uh, but ah. isn't there like a known bug in like the aerospace <laughs> toolbox or something like that? I think they finally got around to being able to modify that. There's some it's interesting the micro li- <laughs> contract reasons why so, they couldn't. Uh, so uh, MATLAB is some, all yeah. about the microtransactions. I think yep. it's like a video game, right? Mm-hmm. You, it's free, but like you know, microtransactions is where you like need the stuff. Sure. So you I think the cool it, skin. It depends yeah. on what you're doing with the language. I'm sorry. There's an. Uh, it depends once again. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it depends. It's true. Matt's good true colors. Um, it depends. You know, if if you're trying to and you have a, if you have a lot of money, okay, and money doesn't matter. Um, I would probably say MATLAB mm. just because there's a lot of things you can do with all the different toolboxes that while some of that functionality exists in Python uh, is not quite the same or capability. You know, you can basically generate C code with MATLAB. Now, yes, maybe you can with Python and stuff like that, but I don't think those tools are as streamlined as mm-hmm. this company that you're paying lots of money to you know, to make things sure. streamlined is making things I, streamlined. I will say it is <laughs> streamlined. It's, so, mm-hmm. it's very good in streamlined. Right. In so, that that, so I've, you know, and we, I've used that uh, MATLAB and Simulink especially a lot, um, you know, previous job stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I do like it for the streamlined capability. I still beat my head against it. Um, yeah. It's not like it's perfect. Um, none of these languages are actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it really depends what you're trying to do with it. Yeah. If you're if you're just trying to whip something up real quick and you don't have a lot of money, Python's where it's at. I mean, oh, that's, that's, that's yeah. it. Like, that's what you want to use. I think that that's probably why I lean Python so hard for everything. Like, I, I will just, you know, I'll go off on a, you know, an hour long rant about like just the democratization of just like getting into tech. Right. And it's just like, you know, if you are like a high school kid or a college kid who just wants to like start getting in this space, it's like 
figure out Python, figure yeah. out C++, like mm -hmm. do some projects. Like there really isn't anything barring you from getting in this space. Like you, you also really don't need a degree. Could buy the student version of Matlab. <laughs> but oh, oh, what a what a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just go down there. Right. It's like MATLAB <laughs> and LabVIEW. Oh man, I'm gonna get oh, some yeah. heat for oh, that one. <laughs> cut co knives over here. It's just like it's like about you're, you're gonna you're gonna get in for the the student version and then ah gotcha. <laughs> That's, right. Yep. That's right. Yep. They know what they're doing. Oh yeah. They're oh, doing yeah. it. Oh, it's a great, a real good great job. model. Yeah. Great model. It's like Adobe. Adobe does that too. Oh, I, it's yeah. free. It's free when you're a student, but once you're out, Surprise. they hooked you <laughs> on it, and now you're going to pay their subscription fee. Oh, man. Good. Natalie, DeAndre, what about you guys on the Python MATLAB Julia train? Okay. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, so I really do love Python. Mm. Um, a lot of my master's um, deals with, like, the data processing, like, large chunks of data, like machine learning um, aspects, and Python is so mm -hmm. powerful um, to be able to... Uh, process uh so much at one time they do a great like semi multi-thread like the mm. numpy library is so powerful mm. um for what you can do with it but i actually really want to hear from matt like why is julia like so much more powerful why than is that python? the holy language right. why, so, why is it the greatest ever i'm I this is not brought to you by julia i hate this podcast was not sponsored yeah that's right it's not it's, 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 it's also open source it is like yeah. the like weird mix of python and c plus plus uh, yeah. Yes. So actually, I would describe it as uh, they, they actually call it. Um, it, it What is it? Uh, looks like. No. Um, oh, it looks like Python looks like rips pi like C. Oh, runs like C. Yeah. Or yeah. Something like oh, that. runs like C. No, not wa rips. walks like Python, <laughs> runs like C. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So um, one thing that I love about Julia is it actually compiles down to machine code. I mean, that's like out of the box. That's what it does. You don't have to have any special libraries or any special packages to do that. Um, that's a huge thing. Like, I need stuff to run as almost blazingly fast as you'd like it to run. I hate waiting on things. I, mm. I, I hate it. So, especially code. Um, so, so when it runs, it runs really quickly. Um, now, the compile time, eh, you know, I hate compiling things because yeah. compile time takes a while, right? Mm -hmm. But if you figure it out and understand it well, you can make it compile quickly, and then, of course, it runs quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I also don't like the syntax of NumPy. I'm sorry. Uh, I hate it. I hate There's too many brackets and crap that I have to put in there. I should not have to do that. Um, Julia has a syntax that's much more like MATLAB, actually, um, which mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense if you're doing a bunch of matrix operations, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so I, I really like the syntax better. Um, the fact that it's one based, kind of, Ooh, I'm on the fence no. on that one. That's I'm a really, that, thing. I'm really on the fence <laughs> yeah. about oh, that. That's one. actually a hot take. It's like because one, zero based or one based. Zero. It's fucking Always zero. zero. Based, dude. It depends yeah. what you're doing, right? <laughs> oh my god. No, man. Yes, it zero does. Based. It's <laughs> so if you're doing low level, registered level work, pointers, things like that, zero based is definitely the way to yeah. go. Absolutely, mm -hmm. what you want to do. If you're trying to do higher level math, like vectors and things like that, it's really weird to say I want. You know, to do zero, one, and two of my vector, I right? three, three element vector, right? No, it's elements one, two, and three. It's an Euler three, two, one rotation. I mean, all these things like it's not zero based when you get into the higher level linear algebra math. Sure. So it makes a lot more sense to use one base. Uh, it's really tricky when you start crossing the lines there, which we've done a little bit of, where oh, yeah, you're trying to implement, <laughs> you're trying to call, mm -hmm. uh, you know, C compiled language with Julia, yeah, and now you're trying to access arrays, but you're using the higher level language to, you know, so now, now it gets really tricky. Is it, was yep. it zero or is it one base? Mm -hmm. So I have to subtract one, you know, that kind of thing. So a little bit of ambiguity there, and that's kind of, I don't like that, but, uh, you know, that, I feel like it's a small price to pay for the benefits. I, I will add on to why I'm on the Julia train. It's like, oh, the, the benchmarking tools, the testing tools, oh, yeah. out the gate, oh, it's yeah. so great. Like, it, you can do it all and, like, learning, like, how, how much memory allocation you have you know, uh, creating like a suite of tests for it, just like just checking functionality. It's so great. It It's all out of the box and it just, it makes your life a lot less like hard because you're trying to find like some third party library that like sets this up and you don't, you don't have that. It just, mm -hmm. it's there and it's available. And like the documentation, actually, I will say the documentation is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty good. And, and Julia is still kind of an up and coming language, yeah. in my opinion. So it doesn't have quite the package support that like Python or MATLAB or whatever has. Um, but I mean, it's it's getting there. It's got a lot of the basics that you need, and you know, it's been really great for us so far. Yeah. I will say, if you're like just trying to like start getting into something, I would say like more so Python rather than like Julia or even like MATLAB. Python, there's way more versatility there, mm -hmm. and like just generically things you want to do, whether if it's like 
you know, uh, like data analytics, if you want to start web servers, if you want to, you know, make a website, like Python can do all that. If you want to do basic calculations, um, Python is a good entry point to just like do all of that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess the last hot take question I had is beaches or mountains. And there's there's a reason I asked that. It's Ugh. like, what was it? <laughs> this was like a, maybe a, like a year ago, maybe a couple months ago. I guess it was after you were an intern back here. Back in August. Mm -hmm. I think I was just like, you know, the three of you, I think, like, just had to work from beach. <laughs> set <of> dates, so <laughs> <Yeah. it's> like, <laughs> but no, like at the end of the day, beaches or mountains. And also tell me about that time that I was just jealously looking at you guys working on yeah, the beach. You should have been there. Yeah, you should have been there. there. Uh, South Carolina is awesome. We told you. Uh, should have been there. Should have been there. Beaches or mountains? Let's start with DeAndre. Mm, so I've always grown up around beaches. Mm. But I will say, like I'll say final, like, oh, yeah, beaches for sure. Mm. But I, the mountain is super good. Like snowboarding, I just got into that like a few years ago. And snowboarding, just being on a mountain. You know, cracking a beer, you know, ready, ready for your day, ready for the rush, and it's just like you're gonna eat <laughs> your shit. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, <laughs> breakfast for champions. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna fall and eat shit all the time, but it's okay because it's fun. <laughs> but beaches, final answer. Mm. Natalie, what about you? Um, I'm definitely more like mountains. Okay. Um, because I like just love uh, views and terrains, like different terrains and uh, foliage, like plants. All those things like make me at peace. Mm. And so I've always loved um, kind of like exploring. And also I'm from Atlanta and uh, right up north we have the Blue Ridge Mountains. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. always been like very accessible. But so is the beach since, you know, Florida is just like a drive away. That's fair. You know, it's really peaceful also. Palm trees swaying in the breeze. <laughs> 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 Turns out they have, they have foliage at the beach. No, yeah. no, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have to say beach. I really do. Um, it's probably all those times in Hawaii, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you might be biased. <laughs> interestingly, that didn't sway my opinion. Really? Right? So, really? so it's like, well, I mean, you visit. So the reason why I think is, I grew up in the mountains, um, Shenandoah Valley area in Virginia, um, and I love it. It's 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 great there. Um, but I think you know, spending a lot of your life there, you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm done. I'm ready to you know get out, do something else, go somewhere else. Um, I always love the atmosphere of the beach. I think probably if I grew up and lived at the beach, I'd be like, oh yeah, mountains for sure, you know. Um, but uh, I love the environment of the beach. It's interesting because I, I recently, or a few years ago, several years ago, I'm like, I like to go to the beach, but like, I don't actually want to like get in the water and lay in the sand and stuff. I just want to be in the environment. Mm -hmm. I like to hear the, feel the breeze, you know, hear the breeze, hear the, you know, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> seagulls, whatever, you know, ocean waves, right? Like, um, but I think recently after having some kids, like, it's like, oh, actually it's kind of fun to play at the beach too sure. with the kids. You know, that's what makes it mm -hmm. fun, I think. So, um, I've started to come around a little bit with actually going at the beach and, and enjoying that, that environment as well. No, oh, I'm definitely a mountains guy. Mountains guy. Oh yeah. Denver. Denver. Yeah. <laughs> Denver. I mean, I was yeah. in Denver a little bit and it was just amazing. Just, yeah. you know, the Rockies and just like everything is beautiful. You just climb the mountains and then just like pure serenity. Just everything is quiet. That was great. Mm. Sweet. So to transition a little bit here, right? So something I also wanted to get into is just like the state of the world, state of the union, just like how we approach avionics high level, given, you know, everything from supply chain to, uh, you know, the challenges we face on hiring. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about like, um, you know, like what are some of the biggest challenges that we face here at Hermius from an avionics front um, that, you know, are probably the ones that you guys deal with on the day to day, uh, whether it's on the supply, ch supply chain side, which, you know, I certainly you know, lose a lot of sleep over supply, uh, you know, lead times going from one month to four months to 12 months on some things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I, I think that, you know, really making sure you're ahead of the, you know, ahead of the game on that type of stuff is, is the only way to succeed. But, you know, in terms of that and hiring, I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the biggest challenges that you guys currently face and kind of, in your opinion, are the big ones that will affect avionics development here at Hermes? Uh, for my day to day, it's, Disappointment from Bigelow. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> so it's like a kid, uh, like uh, I'll show him a drawing, and it's just like, look what I drew, and he's just oh. like, ah, no, that's not, that's not the right oh, drawing. No. And I was like, ah, yeah. he asked for an apple, I give him an orange, and I'm like, that's a fruit. <laughs> it's a fruit. It's citrus. It's fine. No, Bigelow, I need you to double down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna deny any of that. <laughs> Like it's it's a fruit. But They're in the same category. You ask for the fruit. Some of it may not 
maybe me not being specific enough or, or <laughs> yeah. on the question, but, Bigelow but that definitely just, happens. Yes, that happen, it's just like that's my day to day. That's DeAndre's <laughs> biggest challenge. Here. Biggest challenge. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> challenge in avionics yeah. we have here at Hermes <laughs> is, <laughs> is, is Matt Bigelow's out. expectations. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. Oh, that's a great thing. That's a great. We thing. need more of that. We need more expectations. <laughs> but I guess like. Uh, on an actual, <laughs> besides a, a like, real reason, a real reason. I'd say this: uh, the one thing we always face is the supply chain. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Shit's a, not good right now. It's like every day. It's like we get a longer lead time, and definitely Bigelow and Anthony. Like you've been doing a lot of like the hardware ordering. Mm-hmm. Like that, it gets worse every time I ask you, mm-hmm. and it's just like, well, why? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's like if you ask me a week ago. Well, I guess two weeks ago. Like everyone is everything from you know titanium. To nickel, to you know this the silicon and these transistors, mm. uh, to the you know the integrated circuits that are all happening. Really, like everything is just cascading as well, which is you know just like drawing out everything, right? Yeah. So if we're reaching out to you know OEMs and you know using their commercial off the shelf part, um, which you know sometimes is the right thing to do. You know we have a vertical integration you know uh, philosophy here at Hermes, but you know there's a time where you can move way faster just buying the thing that currently exists. Now uh, you know long term is the the long-term vision to vertically integrate a lot of the things, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we actually leverage a lot of vendors right now that you know are going to get quarter horse in the air way sooner than if we wanted to vertically integrate the whole chain. But you know, especially with the su- supply chain right now, we're we're facing a lot of why that's hard, uh, and it's you know the cascade of you know you can't just take in raw material and make a product. Um, there's a lot of steps in between. Yeah, I would say. Uh, I mean, you hit on them the sol- supply chain definitely, um, but uh, also the hiring. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. We are growing very quickly uh, as a company, and the demands on us as an avionics team is increasing as well with that that scaling, um, as well as you know let's try and still hit these deadlines that we've set and uh, with the people we have, but we actually need a lot more people to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So you know, getting people in the door, um, you know, good qualified people that can do these jobs, mm-hmm. I think is is a big challenge uh, at this point. I mean, it's. It's something that can be done. It's just, uh, you know, long lead times on those too, right? So it's oh, yeah. <laughs> got, got long lead times on things and people. So oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> especially for the people, it's like, ah, uh, there's, they're great, you know, technically there's a road stop personally for like their life. And it's just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's a big Natalie, I know right. that we were talking about this the other day. Yeah, right. Like right now, I think uh, more and more people want to work remotely. Mm-hmm. And with mm-hmm. uh, how fast we're moving and all the things we do here, that's uh, not very easy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so hiring people, especially in the software field, mm-hmm. who are okay with moving to Atlanta and yeah. um, like being on site mm-hmm. is, uh, I think, one thing. Yeah, I think that is such an important thing, right? Like something I'll say often in interviews is it's really hard to turn a wrench remotely. But, mm-hmm. you know, in, in our case, it's like it's really hard to plug in a connector, you know, when the Wi-Fi is down. Try troubleshooting that remotely. It's like, sorry, you can't. You have to be here. You have to be yeah. able to plug into a switch, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it's just like, but also I think that the type of people that probably do the best at Hermes are the people who probably sat behind a computer screen for far too long in their career, right? It's the people who do want to, you know, start plugging things in, play with hardware, build Uline tables. Matt Bigelow <laughs> loves building new light oh, tables. Man. <laughs> and we order so many, so it's I like, yeah, I love it. Just, <laughs> but no, it's well, just they like, need to be built. But they, there really <laughs> is so good there, there is something about you know software engineers or electrical engineers or computer engineers or, or whoever on the avionics team that is just like you might not have ever had the opportunity to like actually just get dirty, like just like really get in there, turn the wrenches, right. like. Um, there's an opportunity that is like unlike anything else out there, especially in like, you know, your your standard commercial air aviation industry, where it's just like you might be a designer and then you throw it over the fence to the person who might be manufacturing and then they throw it over the fence to the person integrating it. And then there's another person who's testing it or, or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious, you know, we, we talked about expectations versus reality, but um, I know the four of us have definitely had to hike up our sleeves. <laughs> on multiple occasions um like what is something that like you did not anticipate doing at all <laughs> that, that you found i know that like for me personally like building out site 27 uh you know oh, the yeah. noise abatement that was i think that's a an easy one oh, the uh, shit pit oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> i'll say that one <laughs> the indoor plumbing though it's when it's working it's the best in the world yeah when oh, it's yeah. not working oh yeah it's another good. story but i'm curious to go around the room like what's something you just did not anticipate at all yeah, so um, I did a lot of the, or helped a lot with the electrical work mm-hmm. uh, at Site 27. Um, 
I think it was just we had some contractors working on it and not really anybody else had any experience with, you know, like high voltage electrical. Um, and I had done some work at my house and stuff. I mean, I'm not really qualified to do any of this necessarily, at least on paper. But, um, you know, I, <laughs> I was like, oh, you know what? I can kind of help push this along or make this, you know, work a little better. So I kind of got involved with that and ended up doing some of it. And, uh, you know, now we've, we've got it up and running and everything, which is great. Um, part of that was the pump, the water pump. <laughs> in the which okay so we, <laughs> we 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 have we have a fresh water pump right okay so it's supposed to pump fresh water from a tank into the facility uh for sinks and toilets and showers and stuff like that right. um and it got located in the actual pit that contains the sewage tank as well which the sewage tank I, the sewage <laughs> tank i'm not sure how that ended up i i mean i think i do but like sewage it, situation. it was probably not supposed to go there originally but it ended up going mm-hmm. in there uh so we, we had a little situation with that pump and um it uh didn't end up working so well i think because of um some rain and stuff mm-hmm. like that yep. and uh, just getting it working again and you know trying to <laughs> elevate it out of the <laughs> sump of the rain I pr- and stuff. I promise that for the people it. listening, there are other jobs here at Nermia. Yeah. 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 Not, <laughs> not everything uh, is related to sewage. It's kind of funny, though. It's hilarious. <laughs> but but I, yeah. I love that now it, it works really well. And there was also mm-hmm. issues with the generator mm-hmm. cutting out because the pump would start, mm-hmm. and we had to adjust that. To fi- you know, it's just all kinds of interesting yeah. Things you'd never think about. I mean, it was awesome because to get exposure to all that and like have mm-hmm. to solve these other problems that, you know, you kind of let your brain go in a different direction and, and you're still solving problems, but you're not on your bread and butter type problems that you're used to mm-hmm. solving. And so you can kind of ex- get exposure, kind of expand your knowledge base, things like that. It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Something that I know that Natalie and I talk a lot about, but I think we've all talked about it is like really at the end of the day, our job is not, you know, GNC or software or even avionics or even quarter horse or even like planes. It's like building this company, right? Mm-hmm. Like whatever it takes to build this company and, you know, be successful. And, you know, it just so happens that we happen to be the best people at, you know, software and GNC and visualization and data and, you know, the electrical people here at Hermes. Um, but at the end of the day, like really just saying like, hey, we're going to just build something great is is really at its core what our jobs are here. Um, you know, I know Skylar and Glenn are always saying that sometimes the best thing you can do for the company is holding a wrench for someone else, mm-hmm. you know, which is why we have, uh, you know, a conference room named Wrench. Uh, it's it's all <laughs> it's all part of you know what we're doing is like you might like even though you might have an idea of what a job description is in your head, like that's not your job here. Yeah, like honestly, uh, some of the things that I've done that I didn't expect I'd be doing here um, are some of the things I'm most proud of. Like one, for example, is uh, riveting. Yeah, I learned how to rivet. <laughs> yeah, with Daniel, right. like is riveting Saturday quarter ah. horse builds. <laughs> Um, but also, uh, things like I place the security cameras and safety lights oh, at yeah. the test facility, which are also awesome. They're very, very high quality cameras. They're great. Yeah. Just 4k, just all the angles. And it's, it's great for, you know, making sure like understanding, you know, what's happening at the facility, but also <laughs> it, uh, it tells people like we're testing and, uh, to move to a safer location <laughs> for testing. <laughs> um, on top of that, also wiring the ethernet cable. Like I helped. <laughs> Not as much with that. Okay, y'all, y'all really did. Oh, it. I, I will say, like, <laughs> the wiring trays. Under, under the, site two seven. The wiring trays. I'm taking full. I, that was my push. I was this, like, we need cable management. That was a great idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it it was the worst. It was bad. Job, yeah. <laughs> I cleaned out the whole underneath site two seven. Everyone oh. heard me because there were spiders everywhere, and I was crying. DeAndre doesn't like spiders. I hate spiders. <laughs> all of them die. That's all like and enough said. <laughs> I clean we cleaned it. We cleaned it. It was just a long brutal mm-hmm. day of just cleaning that and then setting up the setting up the wiring trays. Mm-hmm. Like that was so important of like yeah. hey, we need great cable management mm-hmm. and that's nothing I would ever think I'd be doing mm-hmm. ever. It's just like, hey, I know how rats nest a server rack Mm -hmm. and even for like a facility like underneath, like that can be terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, under site 27, there's about a three foot clearance between the bottom of the container and a cement foundation. Uh, And that is where we have to work. So we're kind of on rolly little stools that roll around or whatever and like bending over and it's it's mm-hmm. not pleasant but yeah i also uh, love that i've never gross. had to i've never sorry to cut you off there <laughs> go ahead uh i was like i've never had to fight for like how holy wiring has to be like i know that this is a very <laughs> strong opinion that i have that like you know there, there are certain systems you know whether they're high pressure systems high voltage systems um that like they are holy things and you you know treat it with reverence mm-hmm. um i think i've taken the same thing for our harnesses here like they all have to be perfect they all have to be like you know you have your service loop like 
connector eyes, mm -hmm. like no shielding, just sticking out and looking ugly. Um, but yeah, just like under Site 27, it's just like how much the whole team cared about like this has to look good. Um, Cause I think that there is probably a temptation to be like, ah, it works. Yeah, right? just but throw that wire there. No, yeah. it's just like when yeah. it's your company, it's like, no, it, I don't care if it just works. It has to yeah. be the best version of it working, right. which it is, oh, I love it. Oh, the underneath yeah. looks freaking great. It's actually manageable. It's mm -hmm. so awesome. It's, that's the purpose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish we had a whole story under there. Yeah. So you could stand up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Next, next, <laughs> next facility. Maybe next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> next Ooh. A real basement. <laughs> oh, we're, <laughs> the next facility when we're doing, when we're, when we're engine testing the, you know, the, the engine that will go in Dark Horse. Oh, that's mm. going to be. Yeah. So cool. Can it even fit in one container? Question mark. Yeah. No, probably a, not. Four container situation. Oh, no, it's gonna well, be many more I, than four. I containers. think it's not gonna be containers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Concrete walls. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. But we we're a container company here. <laughs> we are, but oh, containers yeah, that, are only so big. <laughs> I do think it's really cool that yeah, during the pandemic when we were having like such building supply shortages that mm -hmm. we uh, Hermes as a company just decided like okay, we'll just build everything out of shipping containers. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, well, that's great. They it talked about it in the last podcast. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't that they decided that. It was just that it was, was the yeah, thing that made the do. most sense. It's mm -hmm. like everything converged on shipping containers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing that's we have an abundance of right now, it seems yeah. like. That's sweet. <laughs> and then uh, I also just want to talk a little bit more explicitly like on the on the hiring front. You know, like right now we have, you know, a six person <laughs> avionics team. And, you know, as we grow that, we're also, of course, building out the technical skill sets in addition to, you know, building a team that works really well together. Um, you know, like what are what are kind of the the big roles that, you know, you guys think about? What, what are the ones that you, you know, stay up at night thinking about uh, that, you know, we want to explicitly talk about here? Mm. Well, well, you can start. I, I think that we need some more software folks. And I think that's going to be one of the hardest ones to hire for just mainly because of the remote situation or lack thereof. Um, I think a lot of software people expect to be remote uh, mm -hmm. these days. Um, maybe that'll change the next year or so, but you know, I think that's going to be a big challenge mm -hmm. to, to hire that. Um, you know, on the GNC front, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for uh, modding, modeling and simulation folks. Uh, usually those are people that also do controls and like to do controls and stuff like that, but uh, I think there's less people that it's like, yeah, I've focused on modeling and sim my whole life, and that's what I love to do, kind of thing, um, you know. And, and doing a little both, uh, it's obviously you know part of the culture. Like that's fine, like that's no big deal. But you know, it'd be nice to have somebody that likes to focus more on that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, to build up that capability. Um, but obviously, we're looking for anybody, GNC software, simulation, anything related to that um, that front. So, sweet, Natalie. I know we talked about <laughs> a couple things the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, like Bigelow said, you know, um, software people, DevOps people. Um, we like can't, the network side. Yeah, is, we I can't, think where we went the other day. Yeah, clone ourselves. So, yeah, on top of that, we also need to build out our network infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we're looking like probably for like a networks application person who understands, um, you know, networks from the bottom up, mm -hmm. you know, Ethernet hardware to like UDP, TCP packets and the web. Um also, who can do specialty things like uh, special buffers on network switches, um, because when we uh, get to testing like multiple engines, you know, for multiple platforms, we're going to have so much data coming through. Um, it's going to become like a whole monitoring situation. Mm -hmm. um, People are going to ask for too many sensors. Yes. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> that's already yeah. But like, you just got him crying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's both. happened so, people, many, people so many times. asking for sensors, too yeah. many sensors, and him crying. Oh, okay. crying. In, I mean, but in this world, like, we should be able to have as many sensors as we need to understand no. the system we're building oh, and okay. make it better. I'll throw a little asterisk there. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not doing, I'm not building those harnesses. Within reason. <laughs> I'm not building harnesses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you want to build the harnesses, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. If they'll build the harnesses. Oh, yeah. some, I mean, the propulsion team, like, thinking about all the harnesses they built. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And they're good mm -hmm. harnesses. Good. They look good. Yeah. We're also looking for um, somebody who is you know uh into database management mm -hmm. um because as like i said we're going to be taking a lot of data um and that's going to also need to link up back mm -hmm. to the hardware so that's like a relational database yeah. um situation and being able to kind of like manage because it's the hardest part with databases is the management mm -hmm. like as you grow them um and everything being kind of backward compatible oh, as so well something that you know I know DeAndre and I have talked about is even like for for things like that, looking outside of traditional aerospace as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think like that's mm -hmm. where we can actually be super creative, you know, like whether they come from, you know, the EV world or like even like, you know, the, the database world or even like 
like, hey, like, do we start looking at like the PlayStations of the world or, you know, like people who are really into UI for like our HMI side of things? I think yeah. we have to based on your yeah. comment right. about, you know, 10 year technology, you know, companies building stuff 10 years out mm -hmm. with 10 year old technology, oh, mainly yeah. in the aerospace industry, too, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I think that's definitely something we're going to have to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. DeAndre, and what about you? The, uh, Oh, sorry, Natalie, I cut you off there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I wanted to also mention that right now we are hiring a front-end developer. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, this, like, oh, I mentioned this earlier. Yeah, they'll be working, like, with a pilot mm -hmm. to design yeah. the UI. That's actually the specific one DeAndre and I were talking about the other day. Yeah. Um, like, we the, fr the front-end HMI. Oh, you role. weren't talking about, like, the crypto person <laughs> that needs to mine... Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. We're gonna needs, go full crypto. Yeah, they need <laughs> That's to how we're gonna start making money. Here. You know, with our J eighty five engine, they need to mine crypto oh. and figure that out. And then we're actually just oh. a crypto company. We company. we want to go full, just like energy density of Jet A. <laughs> yes, yes. I think. That's the best use of our time, obviously. I think so. <laughs> we're a data company. Absolutely. <laughs> we're a data company <laughs> at Hermes. That's how we're going to do it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think the biggest one uh, I think we've been talking about, and then that falls under what you were talking about, of like this HMI person. Mm -hmm. um, this person that can really like dive deep and like really work with the flight test team there and create this almost like this new sexy UI that just makes so sense and is so intuitive works with like pilot like traditional pilots where they understand it's almost like an intermediate of like the old school uh you know traditional throttle stick um and more so uh providing that same type of haptics with like a newer suite of tech whether if it's touch screen maybe it's like some sort of like vibrational thing um but it's really you know progressing that tech in aerospace i feel like it's very outdated you see traditional UIs look like iads all the time. They look like they're, you know, uh, it's it, it's not intuitive. There's a lot going on. I think definitely it can be revamped. And there's uh, countless papers I've looked into it and, like, UI suites that are into that. Um, so I'm interested. Like, yeah, I, I really would want a person to, like, take that and own it and be like, hey, this is, we're going to put all UIs down to rest for all aviation and this is the new thing this is we're we're deprecating all old tech and it sucks all of it sucks and, and then now, there was one more standard that's right <laughs> and there was one more standard which and is ours because it's obviously better it's obviously uh, the best obviously the best yeah and yeah haptics that's oh. that's yeah. like that mm -hmm. new thing that uh we're seeing a lot now mm -hmm. in uh vehicles that oh, i feel yeah. like yeah. could be used more in mm -hmm. aviation yeah because okay. like at least like traditional you like with HMI, like and working with those pilots, like you don't get like with the throttle and stick. You want to make sure they're all familiar with like how they're you know controlling the aircraft and like whether if it's like some vibrational thing with the seat or if it's like the you know stiffness of like their instrumentation. Like you have to capture that in some some factor, which is like I think could be simplified. Mm -hmm. I could I could be wrong. Maybe it can't be simplified. Maybe this is the go to, mm -hmm. but. Oh, we're going to figure it out when we vertically integrate the whole <laughs> yeah. stack. It's ours. Yeah, it's ours. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, like on the electrical side, you know, uh, lots of needs for avionics technicians, really someone owning like test and integration, uh, both for our the engine campaigns that we're doing right now through Block Zero Engine, Block One Engine, and then, of course, through Quarter Horse Integration. Um, there's a massive need for uh, really like just bringing it all together as well. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know, Natalie, you mentioned like, you know, a problem is just so we can't just like make clones of us to do all the work. But I think like going even beyond that, like at this point, unless you're 10 times better than us, like it's just like that's we have to always be increasing the average bar here at Hermes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, within avionics, we certainly have a lot of trust, you know, left and right um, and kind of building up just like we want to get even better and start pulling the average up. Uh, is that's the name of the game, right? We we need the best and brightest people across the industry, but even beyond that, working here at Hermes, because this is where the cool problems are. There's never-ending problems. Yeah. There's more <laughs> no problems. No shortage of problems. <laughs> like, engineers will just make their own problems. That's what we're really great at, is just, like, making our own problems. It's like, hey, we have more problems. Yeah. So, like, uh, we're, we're really great at that. Oh, man. So. Well, you know, I have a lot of problems to solve after this. So <laughs> I think we might have to wrap it up. <laughs> no, and they're good problems. Though. I do want to say that it also is like a really cool job oh. that we have here. Oh, yeah. oh, oh it's, yes. it's weird. I've never yeah. experienced anything like yeah. this before, <laughs> but it's the best set of challenges I could ever be solving. 
I guess, all. like, one way to end it is just, like, I know we like this question is, like, what's the one thing you love about, like, your day-to-day? Mm. Like, what's That's the a one dumb question, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love how I walk into my morning and I have no idea what it's going to look like, <laughs> right? I think, like, <laughs> a lot of people don't like it. I love context switching, <laughs> right? Like, even today, you know, you walk in That's and it's like, we need, we need, uh, we need quarter horse con ops, we need Depends. weight numbers, you know, we need connector wiring diagrams. Um, and I, I love how, um, you know, it's, it is so exciting. And I think, like, maybe how close I am to, it's just like, oh, my job is just whatever we need right now to progress quarter horse, to progress the company. Um, I love that aspect of my job so much. Um, and then, of course, there's the people side of it as well. Like, I think... Uh, I've enjoyed those challenges, like maybe even more than the technical challenges, because I think like all I, I love just nerding out and designing PCBs, like that's my bread and butter. Um, but something that I I love so much uh, is as well that I've gotten here at Hermius is um, just like figuring out how to build a right team to solve these problems, right? Um, something that I think is is pretty cool to think about is you know you have a certain amount of hours in a day to like provide impact, um, but then like the second order beyond that is just like if you can empower multiple people after you to to you know have that same level of impact and they can empower other people beyond that um it's like the coolest pyramid scheme ever is like (laughs) building an awesome avionics team and i i just absolutely love that about my job oh it's totally a pyramid scheme you're right (laughs) (laughs) don't tell people that i mean it's magic in no way (laughs) is it a pyramid scheme (laughs) i just love coming in in the morning and like driving out to the test site and seeing all like the planes oh. like take off like the little planes and jets and then I'm like wow today's a beautiful day f- to fly oh, and I yeah. think like maybe one day we'll be like today's a beautiful day to fly and we'll just take off on our <laughs> aircraft oh yeah I think you probably get a little too used to the fact that site 27 is on an active oh, airport yeah. like you're just you you're have to stop so and spoiled. wait for planes to fly over you <laughs> right. yeah. we're so spoiled <laughs> yeah. I only notice whenever like you know we're on an interview or bringing a visitor out there and like I'm just like, you know, I'm unlocking the gate to an airport and I have a little light on my car and we're driving slow and we're looking at all these planes. They're like, oh my God, what is happening? And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. This oh, is yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is not normal. That's not, yeah. What about you guys? Go big alone. Uh, I I have to kind of say the same thing that it I depends. love. No, I love. <laughs> it just it depends. depends on the day. No, that's the right. Day. No, that's right. So um, I, I actually... I'm of two minds of the whole coming in and mm. not knowing what your day is going to be. I do love empowering other people to get stuff done, you know, unblocking folks, giving them the resources they need, things like that. Um, you know, that, that is something I love doing. Um, I also love being able to kind of be in charge of, you know, kind of my own destiny, really. It's like if I want to go work on this thing and it's going to be beneficial to the company and stuff, it's like that's what I'm going to do, you know, and or, uh, you know, here's a problem that I need to solve. And it's like, oh, I, who's going to solve it? Oh, well, I guess – these people are busy or doing other problems, you know, I'm going to go solve it, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I love the the kind of the freedom to, uh, you know, explore and and solve the problems that need to be solved, um, you know, and just kind of that sense of accomplishment uh, coming from that. So th- those are kind of the two things I think I cheated. I said two things, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> DeAndre, what about you? I will say I'll tag on with Natalie and then add on a little bit of that. But like when it's like it's different when you open the gates you drive, airplanes are flying over you. Angelic voices are singing. Angelic voices. It's a beautiful Georgia day. Windows down, tunes up. And by, you just yeah, like I was going to say by angelic voices, <laughs> do you mean DeAndre's just test site playlist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then like the windows are down. We're cruising, getting ready for the side. And it's just like, I'm building a fucking plane today. Oh, That's man. I get hyped about it. And oh, then like. There's n- nothing heavy quite like when, you, when you bring. Like it is cool though. Like when you, and then, you know, we're, we're building this plane. But even like when like we're testing an engine. Like, oh, how many yeah. times do software engineers get to be in the room, like, bringing yeah. an engine to Max AP? Yeah, it's crazy. And then I will say it's, like, those, like, the really, like, hard pushes, like, yes, they can they can, they can can take a lot out of you, but, like, they're the most, like, they're the most gratifying, mm-hmm. right? You're doing, like, I will say, like, there's some late test site nights where it's just, like, you know, things, we're solving all the problems, and we're just like, ah! <laughs> the problems and then you solve them and you're just like i'm so good i'm the greatest and deandre yeah, loves feeling pretty. beautiful next yeah. day all testing's yeah. going smooth <laughs> yeah. and you're just 
there to support. It's yeah, great. I think it's like the Kanye feedback of it. Oh. I'm just like, I'm the greatest. <laughs> like Kanye, <laughs> Kanye loves Kanye. Kanye DeAndre loves, loves DeAndre. DeAndre. <laughs> yeah, so it's like I solved the problem. So I think Are you I think that's the change your name to Ye or Ye. Yeah, yeah, oh, maybe DeAndre. DeAndre. Ye, yeah. DeAndre. Yeah. I thought you were gonna do Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I have to get my PhD yeah. and then I'll be real. Yeah. Actually, you don't. But really? Yeah, I don't think Dr. Dre has a PhD. Well, I can. You know, my goal is actually getting honorary PhD. There you go. I don't have to try because I'm. I'm Kanye. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a goal. Oh, but like, man. I would say that's like my favorite thing is just like ah, like, right. It's that. So I'll work on quarter horse avionics. DeAndre's gonna, you know, go down his DJ career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Maybe. Oh man, sweet. I think we're good.